Hello everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. So last week we talked about some of the Tor settings which will help you achieve uh, the maximum privacy and anonymity while, the, uh, while accessing the dark web. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the browser fingerprinting, why it's very critical and why you should pay attention to and, and how you can minimize, uh, give like you know, minimum data to the attackers out there or fraudster. So first off, what is the browser fingerprint? Uh, it's also called as a device fingerprint and you know as the name suggests uh, fingerprint is unique for each person uh, that's why we always rely on the biometric data uh, that's what the browser fingerprint also means somewhat similar so whenever you are online and your device provides whatever website you are visiting with with specific data relating to your operating system settings even hardware sometimes the act of using the data in order to identify an individual is known as a browser fingerprinting Website do this for example in order to detect which browser plugin screen resolution you are using, what language you speak and even which time zone you are in among us various other factors. In this way it becomes possible to not only digitally identify individual visitors which will eventually like you know uh, violate your privacy but also track their activity so you are not no longer anonymous as well so that's why uh, this is very critical when you are want when you want to uh, access the dark web you want to be make sure you are very private and, and anonymous and, and make sure your browser is configured that way now this is how I see and I found this uh, this image uh, which is like you know on privacyaffairs.com which is quite interesting so uh, when when someone is trying to do the fingerprint your browser there there are several things that they actually track and based on that they identify who the actual user is accessing xyz.com so first off they they check what the platform is then they also check what the screen resolution is that's why i said like you know we should never open this in the full full browser window like full mode uh, then what are the fonts that it, that you have uh, plugins plugins are also very critical then the time zone uh, which we just saw in the definition it also tracks the color depth uh, ad blocks is set or not pixel ratio cpu class etc so these are some high level classes uh, which will determine whether like you know what uh, what amount of data is collected by xyz website when you are when you are browsing using your browser now here is the one setting which I would like you know we briefly touched upon in the previous lecture but then I started like okay in the next episode I'm going to cover it fully because there are a lot of things to talk about so first thing is uh, here you can see the security level right and there, there are multiple levels you can actually change it from here or you can also go to the options or uh, sorry the settings and then you can also go there so let's go here and see what are the options we have so there are three security levels which are available in the top browser so first one is standard, uh, safer and safest. Standard is the all Tor browser website features are enabled. So it will allow the JavaScript. It will also allow JavaScript on the non HTTPS content. Uh, it will be a little slower than your usual browser, but it does a decent job. Then you have the next option, which is safer, uh, which disables the website features that are often dangerous, causing some sites to lose functionality. So JavaScript disabled for the non HTTPS sites. Some fonts and math uh, symbols are disabled. Audio and video and WebGL are click to play. So it's not playing by default. So whenever you load the page, the video will not start playing. And then there's a third option which is the safest one as the name implies so only allows website features that require for static site and basic services this effect changes affect images media and scripts so javascript is dis dis disabled by default for all the sites if you see in the safer it was only disabled for the non-https sites some font icons match symbols images are disabled audio and video are click to play right so uh, these are the three options now we need to evaluate uh, of course like you know uh, safest is the most ideal option but sometimes you lose the functionality website functionality and the look and feel it's not as uh, like you know uh, user uh, we are we are used to see it but that's the safest option now to compare all three what i've done is cover your tracks is the uh, standard you can you can run this uh, like you know you can test your browser on this website cover your tracks and it's, it will tell you what are the uh, fingerprinting data that it could collect and what are the like you know some of the data that your browser is giving out to the websites so this one i ran it as like you know standard safer and the safest so if you if you see the first one for the standard uh there is a uh, like you know this is the summary and it says blocking tracking ads it says partial protection okay that's good blocking invisible trackers yes 
and protect you from fingerprint partial protection so it still gives out some data so here as you can see within our data set of several hundred thousand visitors a uh, test in 45 days only one in 9640 browsers have the same fingerprint as yours so we are not very unique um, and currently it gives out the 13.23 bits of identifying information now next one is the safer option uh, here it says uh, we are partially protected and the main difference you will see is the fingerprinting it says your browser has a nearly unique fingerprint while here it says you are you are partial protected let's see why it says unique fingerprint because let's say your browser is unique one in 55,440 browsers that's amazing however it does give out the more data or more bits of data in the fingerprint information i'm also going to show you what are this uh, data actually is like you know what data is this browser giving out and the last one is the safest option so it says is blocking ad yes invisible yes and fingerprinting yes so here you can see our browser is unique so uh, in 68 which is quite awesome because every 68 browser our browser will be unique and and like you know it's very hard for someone to identify uh, like you know where the request is coming from if you see the number of bits of information that it's giving out is very very less compared to the other two options that was i think 13 and 15 and this one is only six bits of data which is quite remarkable now if you if we see the results and the detailed data so what are the data that it's giving out so first off whenever we make a request of course browser is going to send a request with the user agent headers etc so this one gives out the 2.79 bits of information again then it also sends out the accept headers again that gives out some two bits of data then the plugin details uh, of course there are no plugins installed in the tor browser so that's uh, like in a very little piece of data that it gives out the time zone uh, so time zone uh, of course is metric is string which indicates your time zone like america los angeles or whatever the time zone you have configured and this metric can be used to figure out your general location so that gives out the 2.67 uh, bits of data then you come to the time zone again uh, this will help anyone identify which uh, like you know geo what's a geolocation uh, to many other users so that's why uh, this one is also uh, this one is not accurate because of course I haven't been using this browser in the full screen mode so this might be a false information which gives out most of the data but again this is a false positive so again uh, attackers or, or someone will not be able to use this information to identify if I'm the, I'm the XYZ user or not right then we have the system fonts which gives out some data then cookies enabled uh, this one is 0.13 uh, super cookie test so now if you go ahead and, and read through this this is actually quite interesting read like if you want to go in details and, and see what kind of uh, data that anyone can access while you are browsing some website this is very very interesting and, and suppose you are using chrome or firefox uh, then i would also like you know just encourage and, and use this website to to see what kind of data is it giving out and maybe you can fine tune your security level in those browsers if, even if you are not using the tor for your regular day to day activities right so that's that's also uh, uh, will be quite critical and if we see this one here the data which is giving out is is very very less because we are not using javascript uh, we are disabling a lot of things so yeah there is very less information which is given out if you are using the safest version uh, another thing if you see the shield sign if you are using standard it's it's completely empty if you use safer it's it's half full and the safest is the entirely filled with the black color so uh, I, you can just like you know see which security level you are on while browsing by just looking at this or you can also click and it will say like you know which level you are on uh, so yeah and in some browsers like chrome and, and edge and firefox you can also customize this as well so uh, I, I would highly encourage to use the safest version uh, especially if you are using windows and if you are using tor and accessing dark web uh, then yeah make sure to use that for all the other browsers do do web uh, like you know track 
uh, cover your tracks and then you can explore what are the data which is giving out uh, of course there are so many other recommendations out there uh, which you can use so actually if you go on this particular side it it will say like use the incognito mode right uh, then use the tour you can deactivate the javascript you can mask your ip with the vpn which uh, of course like you know, all of this thing uh, tor does by default and you, then you can also use like you know privacy software and the extensions so yeah there are a lot of other uh, tools out there if you are not using tor uh, for day to day activities you can have in your chrome or firefox so do utilize those read those up uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to drop me in the comment section let me know uh, like you know if you like to see more videos on the privacy anonymity i am obviously going to go in more depth in the tor browser and dark web uh, but let me know what's your uh, like you know favorite videos so I, I know exactly which route to go and if you have any questions uh, feel free to reach out as always i will see you guys the next monday bye